Hi friends, how are you all? In this video, I want to share my experience going through the famous 100 heads challenge by Ahmed Aldori, who has a very helpful YouTube channel and I will link the original video down below. I decided I need to do a challenge like this during summer because I wanted to improve my drawing skills. I never did a lot of drawing videos on this channel and that's because painting is my comfort zone. Sure, I sketch almost anything, but I sketch to paint, I leave out details and basically leave a lot of the problems to be solved with color and watercolor technique. I often even suggest things when I paint and that's why I never actually developed a hatching technique or a go-to drawing approach which makes me sad and every time I draw in my drawing sketchbook it feels a little weird like I'm not a hundred percent sure. So this challenge is perfect for anyone who wants to get comfortable and not just with drawing heads but essentially create composition or just practice how to place things to the page. Day one for me was the 4th of July and I probably finished 10 days later with exactly 100 new hats in my sketchbook, so that's a spoilers, but you know that I finished as planned if you watch my Instagram, where I shared my process and progress every day all the way until the end. I must admit I never knew exactly how the challenge worked. I saw artists refer to it via hashtag the 100 hats challenge, obviously, and mention it here and there and I thought oh, drawing 100 hats will surely help. But then I watched or came across the original video by Ahmed and discovered that there is a time limit and a fully built Pinterest board for this challenge, which helped me so much. I have to thank him for this, even three years after he published the video, it seems to be still very helpful to artists as the board contains the kind of references that I probably would never have come across as my Pinterest board boards are usually filled with pretty girls and children hugging animals and flowers and colorful stuff but definitely no orc statues. I got a little concerned if I'm even equipped to draw subjects that I have absolutely zero experience with but being a silly self-taught artist this turned out to be just what I needed. I enjoyed drawing those old grinning men so much that maybe this video should prepare you for the kind of artworks that I'm going to produce now. In all seriousness, those references are well chosen and very diverse, which helps to loosen up and build a visual library of different faces. my second day I was filling the first spread of my sketchbook with about 18 heads. I still had that initial enthusiasm and I felt that everything was going great. I didn't even mind that I was spending about three hours every day for those 10 heads, sometimes even more. So the problem was this, I really wasn't kidding about not having any hatching or shading technique with pencil. I saw a few styles that I liked visually that worked for other artists and I think that you always start with imitation before you can hone your own approach and technique. So these first boxy and hatchy looking drawings take a lot after Ahmed's drawings from his video. I watched it about three times and I just admired his approach and the way those sketches flow. So I borrowed the style, however imperfectly, for about those first three days that helped me to start things. Then I slowly started to lose the approach and the style as it got inconvenient for me. I realized that it's very hard to finish a sketch within a certain time frame. I was just spending way too much time for stylization and then missing it for adjusting the face expressions. And so I started to prioritize getting to the point of the picture as quickly as possible while using as little lines and shading as possible. In other words, get to the point quickly so that we can actually really draw 10 heads a day.
a little thought on facing your fears during a challenge like this one when you draw it actually doesn't matter so much what it is that you're drawing you can treat it all as different shapes and have fun with them problem occurs when you're expecting getting the likeness of a person a hundred percent but you don't have yet the mileage when it comes to noticing differences there is often a certain error rate and the more that you practice the more experience you have with drawing in general the less of an error is in your drawings i do not get my portrait drawings a hundred percent accurate still with that being said i would want to encourage a lot of beginners to take the challenge despite of not being able yet to get the likeness of the person it will still help you tremendously to not make a big deal out of drawing a head but you should definitely consciously make it a rule that likeness isn't what you're after that will make you much less frustrated and also less likely to quit So I started the challenge with the black pencils, but I thought I was going to switch mediums sooner or later that I get bored as I tend to and switch to colored pencils or pastels, but I didn't touch anything else. I completely fell for the magic of these Stadler peat black graphite pencils that I bought. I used up almost entire case during the challenge. It contained six pencils and then bought another case shortly after. They are beautiful material that is surprisingly cheap for this quality of pencils, but I guess pencils have no reasons to get expensive compared with regular graphite this material doesn't shine against the light it stays matte and velvety but also gets a little harder to erase but I highly recommend them if you want to try something that reminds you of graphite but is more black and yeah really nice to work with another scary looking head and at this point it was about day four I started to feel a little more confident and I lost the background in some cases and focused on building the head from the very basic shapes as accurately as I could paying a little more attention to the first stage of the process when the drawing is still very loose much more than making details look pretty I wanted to mention that blender stick because that is such a tremendous help with that tool I could proceed almost as if I was painting and cover larger areas evenly with a very light tone to create form. The blender helped me even when I wasn't sure where the key features lie exactly. Strategy with some heads was to first create some kind of shading that indicates form already and then sculpt those little features into the form. This helped with greens that were difficult and often even with the delicate features of ladies and children that will probably come later in the video. this one was really difficult. On about fifth or sixth day, I was done with most of those expressive sculptures and orcs and even Gandalf, which was a lot of fun. And getting back to drawing ladies wasn't too easy. I realized that it's much easier to draw a boxy shaped head that has a lot of rough edges and straight lines that you can latch onto while drawing. But young girls with delicate and soft, often very curved features are definitely one of the harder subjects for me. And that is despite of drawing them more than anything else, I still struggled with many of the young faces on that board. Some of the really difficult references were girls with tight hair so that nothing was hidden and you really had to pay attention to the shape of the head and every corner. And some had strong lighting situation that could easily confuse you and those really made me sweat. Sketches like this one took me more than 30 minutes to complete and while I fully support quick sketching as it has its merits, this time I just invested more time into searching for mistakes and tweaking them until I was satisfied. But then other heads took much less time, some were quite 
comprehensive and took about five to 10 minutes to finish. I think it's not a bad idea to time yourself. I saw some artists doing this challenge while setting time limit for every head, but I opted out for more comfort and was able to reserve more time for the drawing session so that I can search for mistakes and think about the best approach. I'm quite proud of myself that I wasn't at all feeling restless with this challenge. That was probably the first time ever. Only during one day of those 10, I struggled a bit when I had a lot on my plate and couldn't commit to drawing practice, but then caught up with those unfinished heads the next day. On the 10th day, I was caught up with the entire board. But please don't get me wrong, I know exactly what it's like to feel restless during painting session, wanting to be done with the work, wanting the work to be gone from the table so that you can move on. This happens to me when I'm forced to create something that I'm not connected with. Last time I had such disconnect with the landscape painting that I did about two months ago, but this portrait subject is always very enchanting to me. I never get bored with it. Uh, so I guess that helped me to stay committed during this challenge from the very first day until the last. What you're seeing here is actually the very last page and maybe you can spot how my quick drawing technique developed over those 10 days. I lost the background long ago but I learned to grab the essence of the portrait a little better without going around it with unnecessary lines that are all over the place. I tried to keep the sketch very simple and I adopted a few expressive gestural strokes here and there when there was a complicated pose to draw like this one with those hands held near the face because this I find is a good solution for showing what's the pose about or the essence of it without having to spend time on execution. I thought a lot about what makes the portrait work and which features need to be emphasized and which left out or only vaguely suggested. I think this is a great skill to have and I need to work on it some more. I always admired art that knows what to suggest and where to keep the detail and this kind of hide and seek makes the process entertaining and I think makes the viewing of the artwork entertaining as well. I'm very happy about the kind of progress I saw in those new drawings and when you think about it 10 days is nothing in comparison with the time that you spend as an artist so the challenge is really a great investment. So thank you, Ahmed, for pushing us struggling artists towards this path of self-discovery and perfecting our skills. I very much enjoyed your challenge and I already motivated some of my local students to try it as well. And I want to do it again. I didn't stop drawing on the 11th day. The habit was already so strong that I couldn't resist drawing at least five heads. Another thing I wanted to mention is that while I was drawing 10 heads a day, it was needed to split the drawing session into morning and evening part because drawing five in one session was the optimal amount for me. Drawing the sixth piece in a row, I already started to lose the focus and attention and needed to rest and go do other stuff. So this is what I would recommend to you as well. Pace yourself and find what works best for you. It's also okay not to finish the challenge if you find it's too much for you or even make it your own and set a more manageable goal. Please do not feel bad if you can't finish a challenge or if you find out midway that it's not your cup of coffee. But 10 days is much better than what I used to pull off during some Inktober's. So I appreciate that my battery didn't die before I could enjoy the sweet spoils and benefits of the finish line. And here is a quick tour of those 10 spreads I created. Enjoy! Thank you so much for watching guys and if you want more drawing tips here is a recent video where I share how I improved my drawing practice. I'll see you in another one.
Bye.